Welcome everyone to the SCRL American Ethanol Series Season 2 Race 10 at Iowa Speedway where we have 42 drivers ready to tackle this very tricky short track. And so far this weekend in the truck series, that was a pretty wild race. And this race should be pretty similar. But out of all three series, this is the only series that has history at Iowa. We were here for we were here last season, season one. I think it was season one race sixteen. And that race definitely had a lot of action uh, in it. I think more so than the other short tracks run in that series, in that season. Uh, I remember there being four cautions, which were all multi-car incidents, and there were actually a couple of what, I, what I'm going to start calling after crashes, where basically it's like after the caution came out, there were a few more wrecks, which took out more drivers. And once it was all said and done, Karl Kozlowski, who started on the outside pole, led every single lap and went on to win that race. And I feel like that we could see, I think some we're going to see some of those things today, and we're not going to see some of those and some of those things we will not see, just because this time around we are under different conditions, such as last season it was a night race, this time it is a day race, which means a hard track should be a slicker track, and so cars, these drivers might, might not have the easiest time finding a, a good groove to stay on. Th that might have a helped a car because that's the, uh, lead, lead every single lap, but I think this race, now that we're past a third of the way through the season, we're really going. We are really going to keep on talking more, more and more about uh, championship, and these are the top. top five, these are the top five drivers and points. Dale Scott in the number fifteen. Maybe he he did not have the best start early in the season, but he has just been, been able to really keep on getting the strong finishes. He has been a little off these past two few weeks, but I think that this is that this is a race where he can get back on track. Right behind him, the driver that has been closing on him past few weeks has been Dean Orton in the 13. One at Ricky, and that run gave him a lot of momentum entering uh, Kansas, but other than those two races, he's been pretty phenomenal these past, uh, the few races before that, and I think that he does start in the back, but I think if, if he can avoid all the trouble, he could definitely close in on, on that points lead. And then we have a couple of drivers here that I think are, even though they're high up in points, they're, I think I would consider them a little under the radar, or maybe we could consider these drivers as dark horses, Jonas Maps Jr. I don't, I think he was the points leader for at least one race this season, but I can't remember what race it was. But I think that if he can stay out of trouble this week and the next few weeks, he can really be like a serious championship contender. And then the other drivers I should mention here is the 16 and Matt Hoshkiss who has really been on on quite the improvement the past several weeks, because I think early, earlier in the season he was like outside the top 15 or 20 in points, and now he's fourth in points. Has, has been winless, but he's gone close, I think, a couple of times. And the final driver we should mention right here that's fifth in points is Andrew Gorman in the number 22. In the past two weeks, he has started uh, up front or close to the front, and this time, not so much. But... but 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 I think that but I think that if he can't can get up front, he should be a driver to, to watch out for. But anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say. So now let's get the cars rolling off. So here is the starting lineup, and because this is short track, I don't have too much time to go over. Like, like top ten or any like uh, notables, so you're going to have to find uh, so you're going to find them yourself or find where you are. But but I feel like that like so far like I just think that like at Iowa there's just been a lot of like un unpredictability and I think we'll definitely be seeing a lot of that today. And two drivers that we should mention here: Garrett Sinner and Lucas Gonzalez, our front row. These are two drivers that have had a very struggling season outside the top 25, but I think that with their high starting positions, they could turn things around here today. Here we go, the green flag is out, and Garrett Snow gets a great start, and I'm sure and I'm sure Dale Scott will be able to uh, pounce very quickly here, as he's already looking to the inside, it looks like he will definitely be grabbing the leader here. And right here, in turns me forward here, as we have a crash behind him right here, oh my goodness! Ape Chalks right here! A Chalks out Jim Kelly, Connor Brian. I saw Cameron Gallantin as well. Oh, are we gonna make it? And 
that was not the way I expected our first caution to end up being right here. I saw Cameron Garlington also like sideways as well, so I don't know what happened to him. But but already a, a pretty wacky start to start Iowa, and it happened off the backstretch, which uh, we did see a couple of instances, I, I believe, off that corner, and, and we definitely saw a couple of wild instances a season ago. But that was not the area I expected to. The area I expected to was turns one two. But anyway, Dale Scott led us back to the caution, and leading all, all of these uh, caution laps is definitely going to help him extend his points lead over Dean Warren by the time this race is over. But we still have a lot of racing left to go, but before we, we, we get back to the green flag, let's show you some instant replays. So there were a couple of things going on under here. So first, Abe Troxell hooks Cameron Gollington, but also at the same time, Club Craft and Jim Kelly make contact, and I believe Philip Goldberg, last explorer at Kansas, and Daniel Boyles also makes some contact, I, I believe. So... Watch this all unfold. Okay, the 18 and 33 did not make contact, but Dick Harbury and still got involved are here. And man, that was a hard impact into the outside wall for Abe Troxell, and that might actually end up picking him out of the race. Which, um, which for him, his 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 miserable season continues to go on. But also the same for drivers like Connor Brady and Jim Kelly, who have also had a pretty struggling season. But, but there were also some pretty amazing saves, such as uh, Cameron Garlington in the 25. But anyway, that's all that happened. Right here, but now let's see if we can go on board someone. Cameron Garlington had a wild ride in the Truck Series event in the lap one crash, and he almost had the same thing happen to him, or a very similar thing happen to him today. <laughs> These past several races for Riley Smith have been a real struggle, and he's definitely wants to gain spots, but I don't think he really expected to gain spots like this. And look at Cameron Gollinton almost coming up to hit you. Cameron Gollinton came very close to hitting Torrin Dieter. No DNFs after that lap one melee on the backstretch, but I think that I remember in last night's truck race there being a couple of us being a couple of slow cars, and, and one of the slow cars actually caused us uh, mayhem once we got a long green flag run. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to get a long green flag run uh, in this race because there wasn't really like any like green flag runs a season ago, but we'll just have to find out. But anyway, Dale Scott leads us back to the green flag. Garrett Center also gets a very good restart, too. And they will be, and they will be, be ready to pounce. Garrett Center looking to the inside. Right, but right behind this pecker here, I think we should watch out for Bron Kedrick in the rain. He had a very fast car in the, the practice session, so I think that he could sneak his way up, up, up in there once he gets once he gets uh, once he catches up to these two here. And now Garrett Center comes out to number four, and he will lead this lap. It's so now Garrett Center goes to the goes to the front. Here comes Bron Kedrick looking to take second away from Dale Scott. Right behind him, Lisa Gonzalez, Torin Dieter, Blaine Keyes, Daniel Boyles, Cameron Gollington, Riley Smith, Ryan Casey. That is your top 10. As we go back up to the front. Oops. And, and now, once again, here, here comes Ronald Ketcher here, going to the inside of Garrett Sinar. Ah, he, he can't make the pass this time. Is the caution out? No, but it looks like we are still rolling here, but Ron Ketchuk, he is there. It might be his best bet to be, to, to be waiting. And as I bring up this, it looks like it's right here. It looks like the line he's, he's using, which is definitely not the bottom line. It looks like it's currently helping him right now, but it looks like Ron Ketchuk is going to get the answer here. I think he actually taps Gerritsen right here, but, but now he's going to go to the inside and now make the pass. And these two have now separated themselves uh, all over from the rest of the pack. Okay, it looks like uh, Atroxel is about uh, is about half a lap um, behind these these two, so it's gonna take a while. But now, Brown Ketchog, it looks like he is definitely going to be leading the next several laps. And now, as we go through the field, I've not seen a whole lot of like uh, uh, as tight racing as I might as I expected it to be. But but I think that that should change possibly very soon. But now Garrett's not here. He's not losing ground here to Bron Ketchog, but so is the rest of the field. Lisa Gonzalez has now gone herself up into third. Dale Scott dropping a couple more positions as Torn Deer now goes up to the front. Torn Deer, 17 points. I haven't really talked about, haven't really talked too much about him this season, but uh, 
I think if he can get his next summer races going in the right direction, he could be a, a championship contender. And as uh, Ron Kachow continues to pull away, I think we're gonna, I think we are going to have a, a battle for second very soon between Lisa Gonzalez and Garrett Sinor. And, 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 and wow, uh, Bruno Ketchon gained a 10 for here on the last lap. Fastest lap, Bruno Ketchon, so it looks like that Bruno Ketchon, he might already have this in the bag. But, but Torn Deer also seems to have a fast car, so maybe it, so maybe if we, if we had a caution, it could uh, it, it, it could give these other drivers another chance. But we'll just ha ha have to see. As Ron Kenshaw continues to pull away from Gatsinger. How close are they from a Abe Troxel? Okay, this will give us a good shot. Um, spectator? Okay, it's so about just like just like a straightaway here, so it could be another several laps or so, but I'm surprised that we've actually stayed green. As we go on onto uh, the back stretcher here, and the spectator camera, I, I guess, is really not that great, but it, it, but it's why I have to deal with. I did not design these race tracks. But now Garrett Sinar here. It looks like that. Here we go. Battle for second right here. Lisa Gonzalez, Garrett Sinar. Lisa Gonzalez looking to pounce. It looks like Garrett Sinar's car. Garrett Sinar definitely has a very strong car, but it, it just it's just not fast enough to catch the eight of Bron Ketchhog. And Lisa, Lisa Gonzalez is looking to take second away. I think she will get second in just a moment. And because laps happen around this track so fast, um, there's not really too much to talk about here. Um, oh, oh there's, there's a driver that we should mention here. Austin Candy. Austin Candy, it's been a very struggling season for him, but looks like that in these past two weeks, he has improved, and, and now it looks like he's now having a car that can contend for, like, top 15s and top 20s, which for, which for him is a... Great improvement over just for just, a, for just having numerous races where he finished very poorly. But now here, but now Bro Ketchog, he has really been able to just pull away over a second here over now Lisa Gonzalez. How close are they from Bro Abe Troxel? Oh, possibly we have we have less than five laps to go, or or will be or will be less than five. Less, less than five. It will be less than five laps to go right here. I think Bruno Ketchuk might catch Abe Troxell. The thing is, because Bruno Ketchuk has, uh, still has a, a large lead, which actually now Lisa Gonzalez is, is actually now starting to cut into that lead right here. If, oh, wait a second here. They're actually going to catch Abe Troxell here in just another lap or two. Abe Troxell here is now visible on the screen. Oh my goodness, how is this going to shake up? Here. But here comes Lisa Gonzalez, so even if the slap car was not there, Lisa Gonzalez would still be a factor. This here. Oh, uh, yes. This is this is now getting interesting here. With just two more laps to go. Can Bro catch it? Hold on. But here comes Lisa Gonzalez here. Two to the bottom. Oh, no. And, and Lisa Gonzalez is going to use Abe Troxel as a pick. Side by side for the lead. Lisa Gonzalez going for her first career win. Oh, bro, bro, Ketchuk is going to get caught up behind Abe Troxel here, and now we're and now we're going to approach the white flag right here. Final lap is in the air, and it looks like this is now Lisa Gonzalez. As as I said, even with even if the lap car was on there, I think Lisa Gonzalez was still going to be able to catch them. It looks like Lisa Gonzalez, all she needed was just a very long run, and that's it. And despite Bro Ketchuk being the dominant driver of the day. Coming out of turn before Lisa Gonzalez, after a struggling season, will get her, will get her first girl chicken flag of the season, and it comes at Iowa. So, so I gotta say, what a very clean race for Iowa, especially after the truck race and the race behind season ago. I did do several test races, and even though I said, even though I said the, the, the drafting distance very lower here, and oh my guess we have a crash behind them. Oh my goodness! So, 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 a, ca so a caution right here. Well, not a caution, just a wreck. After they took the checkered flag, involving drivers like uh, Jacob Reed, Andrew Gorman, and Nick Smith. Oh, wait a second here, and air crash. So, uh, so a couple of cautions are, are here. Not cautions. A couple of wrecks after the, the checkered flag. I wonder what happened. We're going to have to take a look. This looks like this was intentional because a this was after they took the, the checkered flag, but and b the the seven car Johnny Mills just drastically can't 
just drastically went, went up the racetrack, meaning that I think that he must have been mad with Andrew Gorman or whatever here. Because look at here. He goes straight up the racetrack here into Andrew Gorman. They, they, hook, they hook together here, and then Andrew Gorman here just goes sideways here. Sideways here, uh, and and Paul I think gets a piece of it. Jacob Reed definitely gets involved, and then right here O'Neill Balvin gets damage, and so does Payne Keys, and Nick Smith and, and LJ Mills and John Martin did an amazing job right here to slow down just in time. But that was a very strange crash, you know? and I don't think Andrew Gorman is really going to be happy with Johnny Mills, even though that did not that's not going to affect their finishing position. I don't think this one was intentional, but I think it might look intentional to some drivers, but I think one thing to remember was that when we were looking at the spectator cam a while ago, you really could not see that very well, so maybe the spars couldn't see, see this right here, but as you can see here, Mick Crafton just comes right down uh, into Kendall Maynor, and, and Mick Crafton first takes a hard impact into the inside wall, but then Mick Crafton, I think, hits the outside wall. Yes, he does. Not hard, but... But 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 that's definitely some some heavy damage. But because after, but because it was after they took they took the, the checkered flag, that's not going to affect their finishing positions. But anyway, now let's either go on board a driver or just go straight to, to the finishing results. On board, Johnny Mills. <laughs> Neil Balvin, I gotta say, got a pretty big piece of this crash. This car actually got airborne. Biff Crafton finished 17th, and I don't think that's gonna like cause like a huge drop in points, but it's definitely not the finish that I think he really wanted from the hillside winner. And this right here kind of just made it even worse from for his uh, engineers and uh, people who, who built his cars. Ah, oh, that was a hard hit. Here is the finishing result. So, Lisa Gonzalez only led two laps. In the last two laps, for own catch the downward driver of the day, it just didn't seem like that, it just seemed like that his car would really fall off after the long runs. Garrett Sinner also has a strong car, but nevertheless, for all three drivers, this is a very good day for all of them. Especially for Lisa Gonzalez and Garrett Sinner, who I said before they took the green flag about how they've just been had they've had really struggling seasons. And for Ronald Ketchhog, this finisher here, um, is finished. But also the extra bonus points of leading the most laps. This might uh, help him. This is gonna. I think that's definitely go going to turn him into like this like dark horse right here for the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for for Ronald Ketchhog. And I feel like that some of the biggest losers right here were. I think. Other than a Troxel, but I think just Dean Orton overall just really just just did not go anywhere, and this is definitely going to cause him to lose to lose a lot of ground on Dale Scott in the 15, who finished in the sixth position. So I think Dale Scott is going to really have a massive points lead when once the points are all tied up. But anyway, that's all I really gotta say, and I hope you tune in for the Hot Wheels Cup Series event, which will be uploaded later today. And it's at a new venue, New Jersey, New Jersey Speedway, a fictional short track. It's also insanely rough and, and, very, and very old style. But I hope you enjoyed this race. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and bye. Congrats to Lisa Gonzalez.